Hi, this is Nolan from Benchmark, and in today's video, I kind of wanted to give you guys quick little tips and tricks based on some questions that I've received within the last couple weeks, and that's to do with our base setup. So what I've done is I've got one base setup here, and I have another base setup in front of our office. And what I want to show you is the difference in performance you can get out of the rover just based on your base setup. So what I've done in this test is I've got two receivers. They're broadcasting the same message, the same radio protocol. Everything is the same, minus one key fact, and that is where they are set up in relation to the sky. So I've got my receiver here. It's got a nice wide open sky. There's no obstructions. There's nothing that can block any signals. And my other receiver, it is sitting in front of the building. It's lost half of its sky. So here is my base position up against the building. You can see I've lost a good portion of my sky. It might be a bit hard to see directly above the receiver with this camera angle, but you can see behind me the eave sticks out a good portion from the wall and my receiver's actually underneath that. So in effect what has happened is I've lost basically a 90 degree angle above my receiver and that means my base isn't going to see any satellites above the receiver. And that's a big deal because the rover in its RTK solution can only use the satellites that the base can see. The base transmits the information that it sees. The rover uses that information to correct its position. So if you have a base that can't see a lot of satellites, it means your rover is going to see a poor solution. So when I look at Field Genius here, I actually have like 22 to 33 satellites, depending on where I'm at. But that doesn't actually mean anything because when I go into my web UI and I check out the actual settings that are on this base receiver here, it's only seeing 20 satellites. And I can guarantee you, some of that's going to be multi-path satellites as it hits the building here and reflects into the satellite. So it's going to be poor data that the rover's receiving. So, what does that actually mean when I go to take a shot? Okay, so we've taken a quick look at our base setup. We've got one wide open sky, we've got one up against a building. And you might think, oh, you know, these are 7th gen RTK units, the 631 it performs so well against building, my base setup doesn't matter all that much. And yes, I put it up in the worst possible position to make my point uh, for the video. I will accept that criticism. But looking at my screen right now, I've got an RTK fix. And if I dump my antenna, I'll lose my fix here. And if I flip it back up, I'll reacquire it here. It's going to fix just about instantly back on my station, the station that's set up in the open field. And now what happens is if I switch it back to my station that's up against the office here, what we're going to see is a dramatic difference. Instead of having this nice quick fix times, I'm actually not gonna be able to get a fix. I'm in an open field here. There's nothing around me. The 631 should be able to handle this no problem. In fact, an S320, which is three generations old, would have no problems in this area if the base was set up in the correct location. So you can see that once I've switched my radio settings over here, I've actually got a float solution. I no longer have a fix. It says I'm reading 33 satellites, but I'm not getting good enough information on those 33 satellites to get a fixed position. So with that in mind, I really just wanted to use this video to illustrate how important it is to set up your base in a location that is as open as possible, sees as much of the sky as possible, and can give your rover the best information possible. If you follow those steps, if you keep your base in a location without any buildings, without any trees, power lines, anything that is obstructing the sky, you're gonna get the best possible performance and the performance you see in our other head-to-head -head test videos. Because for those videos, we always make sure our base is in the best possible location for both receivers. Without doing that, you're gonna have a tough time. But that is everything for today's video. It's a little bit of a tip and trick on why you wanna set up your base in the best possible location to give yourself the best possible RTK performance. And if you have any questions about anything you've seen in today's video, or you want to see more videos like this, drop a comment down below, reach out to us at 1-888-286-3204, or visit us on the web at bench-mark.ca.